how to take your VTuber model from looking like this to looking like this, without even changing any of the rigging. Hey, hey, I'm Ray. I'm an award-winning VTuber artist, and I'm going to teach you how to get the most out of your model using VTube Studio. Let's get started. All right, so I went ahead and opened up VTube Studio and went to the model tab, which is the little person. We're starting with the original Akari model, which comes free with VTube Studio. I'm just going ahead and testing out the model here. I'm tracking using my phone. So obviously tracking will look a little bit different depending on what you're using. I go ahead and make an item version of Akari. The reason I'm doing this is because that way the item doesn't actually take our updated rigging. So we can see the updates as we go. So I thought that would be useful for seeing the differences as we're making them. I'm going to go ahead and also quickly scroll through all of the settings tabs in VTube Studio so you can get a feel for what's in there. I have a few plugins. I have the Live 2D plugin, the Twitch stuff, um, and things like that set up. Most of that is just pretty basic. We have the camera settings, so if you're using webcam, this is where you will adjust all your settings for that. There's also blink sensitivity filters and the screen effect, which is how some VTubers will do their like model lighting up based on what's on their screen. But the thing that we're going to be mostly messing with today is actually our model settings, which is the little person gear. There's physics settings, which you can adjust to adjust how reactive your physics are. 50 is the default. That's going to be what your model is actually rigged for. And 100 is going to be very crazy. But if you don't like your physics, you can always, you know, tone them down or turn them up. Uh, generally, I'd suggest, you know, maybe talking to your rigger about this before the model's finalized because those are also easy to change in the rig itself. Um, I also am not really a fan of the models moving around, um, kind of sliding on the screen. So I go ahead and set those to zero as well as deactivate. The reason I do this is because if you're using something like VBridger, it might still use those movement settings. So I go ahead and turn those off. And now we're actually into the settings for the model itself. Really quick, before we get into actually messing with our tracking, I want to explain every aspect of this tracking setting square. At the top is just a name. You can change it to whatever you want, whatever makes it the most obvious to you. This is the default name of like face left right rotation. Basically that's determining your face looking to the left or to the right, like shaking your head no. The input is the value that VTube Studio is looking for. This will be face angle X will be that left to right motion. Think of it as like on a graph, the X axis is the left to the right. And the param angle X is actually the value the model is using. This is the default name for the parameter in Live 2D. If your rigger changed it, it may look like a different name or if it's a value that wasn't originally on the model, it may even be something just like param 27. Just know that that's going to be what the Live 2D model associates with that movement. Next, we have the smoothing setting, which will determine how much VTube Studio basically buffers your movement from your face to the model. The higher that this value is, the more it's going to kind of flatten out that movement and make it a lot softer. So if you're shaking your head left to right violently, it might just barely even move because it's just kind of taking that as noise in a sense. Whereas the smaller it is, the more it'll just take your raw movement and into the output. I like to have at least a little bit of smoothing on most things because there does tend to be a bit of noise, especially if you're in low light. But the greater it is, the more it will be hard to move that particular parameter. So just keep in mind that the more you smooth it, the kind of more slow and almost like jello-y, for lack of a better phrase, it'll feel. Just a thing to keep in mind. Auto blinking is going to basically periodically have this value go. So like the name says, it's very commonly used for a blinking for maybe like a pet character or something like that. You can also have it if you don't blink a lot and you want to make it look like you blink a lot. Please blink. It's good for your eyes. Auto breathing is going to just slowly pan up and down this value. It is good for a breathing parameter. It can also just be good for, again, things you want to move periodically and slowly, but generally that's going to be on a breathing parameter. And finally, we have the actual tracking values. 
the left side, I will say this a lot in the video, is your face. This is the movement that you are making with your body. This is what the camera or your phone is seeing. And so you'll see the value go up and down depending on how you move with the associated input parameter. And the right side is the output that is being sent to your model. This is the value of the parameter of what's actually moving the model itself. So if you have the left side moving, it will translate to the right side moving. But the right side is the actual movement of the model, and the left side is the actual movement of your face. We'll go into a bit more detail on what that means and how to work that, but that's what all of these numbers mean. Um, the kind of very faint 30 max, negative 30 min on this example is the values of the model itself. So if you need for reference what your model's rig can actually do, that's where you can look. Okay, let's actually go into fine tuning our rigging. Whee! So the first one is face left right here. Um, and the way that I go ahead and set up any of my model settings is on the left is actually what my face is doing. And on the right is the output that's being sent to the model. So I usually only adjust the left side and keep the right side to what the model is rigged for, you know, within reason. I also go ahead and really quickly change the emote settings on this model because they're all just plain numbers. And so that gets a little annoying when I'm trying to type in like, okay, do 20 and it sets off an emote for the model. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that really quickly and we'll be right back. I will also say in case you're wondering, the way that you can set up emotes like this in VTube Studio is pretty simple. You just add a hotkey and add either an expression file, which is where you can set specific values to your model as positive or negative, and also play animations. And that's how Akari is set up. But we're gonna go ahead and get back to customizing the model's tracking. Um, and I'm doing my up and down motion with my head as well as the head tilt, which was uh, severely limited on the original model. Um, so I kind of really exaggerate that movement because I think that that's fun. As well as I invert the movement of the body because that's really popular right now is that when you lean to the side, your body actually leans the opposite direction. And the way that I do that is that's where I go ahead and I change the output, where I have the output be inverted. Instead of going from positive 10 to 10, I go from negative 10 to 10, if that makes sense, <laughs> up to down. And that's going to inverse that movement because basically you're sending the opposite value to the model that then what its default is. So that's how you can pretty much invert anything on your model. If you're like, oh, I want to look the body to look the opposite way of my head, which is also very popular right now. You can do the same thing. And I go ahead and do the same thing here. I keep the side based off of my actual body the same because I want to keep what my body is doing the same as and just change what the model is being told when it comes to edits like that. Otherwise, I want to keep my face expressions the same. So I guess as a rule of thumb, when do you change the left side of the tracking versus the right side? For me, the rule of thumb is this. If you want to make your face more sensitive and more nuanced, that's when you change the left side. The left side is going to take what you're doing with your face and translate that into model movement. So the left side, for example, when you make that range smaller, it's going to mean that smaller movements will have a bigger effect. So if you go from like 0 to 1, fr from 0 to 1 to 0.2 to 0.8, it's going to be a greater movement from smaller motions because basically you're changing the minimum that'll be counted as zero to 0.2 and the maximum that'll be counted as the absolute max anything bigger than that is just set to the maximum value um instead of one it's 0.8 so you're making that range smaller so it's more sensitive when you change the right side you're making it more reactive so you're taking the same motion from your face but blowing the movements that the model is going to do up more so when you change the maximum or minimum values, you're saying, okay, it's always going to be at least this value, 
or at most this value. And if the model isn't rigged for that much, it'll just stay at the maximum value that it can be. So a lot of times when you do the auto setup in VTube Studio for a VTuber model, you will end up with a mouth that's always open because it sets the mouth's maximum to 2.1, generally, from what I've seen. And that makes your mouth open really wide, even for little movements. So you lose a lot of nuance in the movements when that happens. If you're curious what your model is rigged for, you can actually see the numbers. On the right side, you'll see that it says like one max and negative one min, or you know, one max zero min, or something else if your rigger rigs it a different way. And so that's how you can go ahead and edit um, to your model. You'll be able to see, oh, okay, the rigger rigged this so that it's, you know, have the maximum of one so I can work within that. I generally wouldn't recommend going too much higher above what the rigger rigged because it can kind of make things look really weird. It makes things look really, really exaggerated to the point where it looks off-putting, at least in my opinion. And so if you've ever seen people whose VTuber model's mouth is either completely closed or completely open, that's probably what's happening, is that their mouth is set to 2.1, and so their mouth is pretty much either at the minimum or at the maximum. And there's not a lot of in-between. So like I said, even if they messed with the left side, because the right side is still so large, it's still going to exaggerate whatever they end up having it set to. So that's my general recommendation when it comes to setting up a VTuber model in VTube Studio is threefold. Go on to the left side and make an expression that feels comfortable. Don't necessarily over-exaggerate when setting up your model. Do things that you would comfortably and set your maximum minimums that way. So like close your mouth, see how it goes, open and close a bunch of times, set that to the minimum for mouth open. Open your mouth wide without it hurting or really stretching it and set that to your maximum. And that'll help your mouth move when you're just kind of talking naturally. And then look at what the model is rigged for and generally work close to that for the right side, if not exactly that. I keep it exactly that 90% of the time, so I generally recommend just keeping that side to the model unless you really want something to be very exaggerated. Then, once you've done that, if there's anything that you want to invert the movement of, that's when you go ahead and you change the right side to be the inverted values that you set before. So like negative one on the maximum and one on the minimum, things like that. Then you should have your model being a lot more expressive than it used to be and feeling a little bit more you. Even if your rigger sets up your model for you, I generally think it's important to go in and feel it out with your own face because everyone's settings won't be the same because everyone's faces aren't the same and everyone's setup isn't the same. When I smile, it looks different than when you smile. So you wanna make sure that you're paying attention to your own numbers and how they might differ from what your rigger set up for you. Now they might be great, they might be perfect and they, you don't have to do anything, but at least knowing how you can, can put a lot more control in your hands to making your VTuber model feel like yours and feel connected to your movements and to your face. Now, that said, you do still need to puppet your model. Your model is still, you know, a representation of you. It is not just your face. And also, they're animated, so you have to move a little bit more animated to get the absolute most out of them. If you just talk really stoically and you don't move a whole lot, there's not gonna be anything for the model to pick up on, no matter how sensitive and fine-tuned you've gotten your tracking to be. It can't make movement out of nothing. And if it did, it would look really weird. <laughs> you can have some stuff like an idle animation for like breathing, but it's still not going to look interesting if you aren't moving. So, you know, I tend to lean my head to the sides a lot. I tend to bounce up and down because all of the movements are going to be primarily, if not exclusively, based on how you move your head. So just an important thing to keep in mind is your head is your model. So if you nod or shake your head or tilt your head, that's going to determine the way your model moves. And so you want to be sure that your head isn't just still. You want to move around, you want to bounce. The, the VTuber dance is 
tilting your head side to side and nodding to the rhythm. There's a reason for that. It's because that's how you get your model to move. And I find myself now doing that dance all the time, even when I'm in a car and people can visibly see me. <laughs> it's a curse. Being a VTuber is a curse for yourself now. No, I'm kidding. Um, but yeah, that's the essence of how VTube Studio functions when it re pertains to actually tracking your model. It's translating the movements of your face to numbers that the model is rigged for, which are basically like, you know, zero to one from the minimum of that motion, which might be, you know, either zero of nothing, like mouth closed and one mouth open, or negative one, which would be like all the way to the left and positive one all the way to the right. So knowing how to set that up for you and for your face and for your setup can really make the model shine in a way that you can't do without it. You can have the nicest rigging in the world, but if you don't set up your model for you and you don't react well with your face, it's not gonna look good. So just remember, your setup, your face is gonna mean different things than your rigger setup and your rigger's face. And you wanna be sure that your model is reacting in a way that's appealing by reacting in a way that's appealing with your own face. The reason you wanna tweak the, your model from there is to just make that puppeting more comfortable. The less you have to exaggerate the face, the less you have a chance of hurting yourself or making your face sore from how big you have to smile, etc. I hope this helped. Uh, if you have any questions or anything else you'd like to know about YouTube Studio or Live2D, feel free to ask it in the comments below. I've been Ray, have a great day. to make your VTuber model